the legendary Jeff Foxworthy. Thank you for talking to DBL. Most of us are spending our extra time watching TV while you actually made a TV show. So besides staying busy, you also shaved your stash. I'm so interested in this. In the first time in 40 years, <laughs> what was that reaction like for everybody? How did your face feel? My wife and I have been together 36 years and she had never seen me without it. So. <gasps> When, when the pandemic hit and they started canceling shows, I thought now's the perfect time to do it. My wife who's never seen me without it, looked at me and went, oh wow, grow it back. Uh, so I literally shaved it one time and I started growing it back. And now I know it takes about two and a half weeks to, to grow it back. You know, as far as the show, we had actually last fall, we had planned to, to do this show with a live audience this oh, wow. summer. And then the pandemic hit and we were like, well, you can't do a live audience. And so we started talking about, we were like, could you go in somebody's home virtually? Could they take their phone and walk us down the hall and let us meet the dog and, you know, <laughs> open the sock drawer and pull out this weird thing? And that made it fun to me. As a collector, I am so excited because some people could be sitting on a gold mine and not even know it. These people had things that they were hoping might be worth 50 bucks and they were worth thousands or tens of thousands. In one case, somebody had something sitting there in their home that was worth half a million bucks. So your new show to me is a little bit like virtual antique roadshow meets like Jeff Foxworthy at a dive bar. Like it's just so yeah. much more relaxed <laughs> version of that. Are you a collector yourself? Uh, I look for artifacts all over the country. Probably the weirdest collection, you can see a few of them there, is I collect signed baseballs, but not by baseball players. Like being a comic, I have baseballs signed by Bob Hope, Johnny Carson, Whoa. Richard Pryor, you know, George Carlin. I have balls signed by five presidents. But when people come in to look at them, they're expecting a baseball player and they're like, whoa, whoa, who did Bill Clinton play for? I didn't know Bill Clinton played baseball. So uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. All right, can you give us a, uh, a sneak peek into the most craziest or most expensive? Was that half a million dollars one? Was that the most expensive one you guys will see on the show? That's crazy. Half a million dollars is the most expensive that we've found so far. As far as crazy, one couple, they had the newspaper announcing Lincoln's assassination. Whoa. I mean, this old newspaper. But as we're talking to them about it, I'm looking over their shoulder and on the wall behind them, there's a two-headed calf that's been mounted by a taxidermist. And I'm like, I'm not even interested in the newspaper anymore. I'm like, where do you get a two-headed calf? I'm really excited to see the show. This seems like a binge-worthy sit down. Seven episodes later, I'm like, I could get a two-headed calf. Like, that's my type of show. I did comedy in LA. I'm not at all a road comic, but I wanted to know how you felt the comedy world fitting into this situation. It's super different. How do you feel it can kind of work through this whole coronavirus pandemic? Part of the job as a comic, we're truth tellers. Mm -hmm. Even if the news doesn't tell the truth, comics hold things up and go, why is this like this? Mm -hmm. Why do we say this? Why do we do this? I think we've lost the ability to laugh at ourselves mm -hmm. because here's the truth. Everybody's a mess. Everybody has made mistakes. I remind myself, everybody I'm gonna be looking at is going through a struggle. Mm -hmm. It might be financial, might be physical, might be emotional. Have grace with people. You don't know what they're dealing with. I don't think that laughter makes the struggle go away, but I do think laughter is kind of like the release valve that keeps the boiler from exploding. Let's just be kind to each other. That's a much, much better way to live. What's It Worth premieres August 4th on Annie. I'll be super duper binging it. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thanks again.